Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at a worked out example of a covariance matrix. So here we have a two by two matrix. Notice that the diagonal elements represent the variances of the two data sets X and Y. And then the off diagonal elements represents the covariance uh, of the two data sets or between the two data sets. So the covariance is kind of a way of looking at how the two data sets are related. And so we'll see by the result what that should imply. So first of all, here's the two data sets, X and Y. They each have five elements in the data set. And so we have to find the average of all the X values. So simply add them all up, divided by the number of uh, values that we have, and the average is six. We do the same for Y. We add them all up. So we get 10, 20, 25, divided by five. That gives us an average for five. And then we calculate the variances. So what we do is we take each of the elements of the first data set, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, and subtract from each one of them the average. So we take 2 minus 6, 4 minus 6, 6 minus 6, 8 minus 6, 10 minus 6, and we then take that difference and square it, add them all up, so that's what the summation sign means, and then we divide it by the number in the data set. There's five of them. We end up with a number equal to 8. We do the same for the Y data set. Again, we take each of the numbers, 7, 3, 5, 1, and 9, and subtract from that the average value for Y, which we found to be 5. So 7 minus 5, 3 minus 5, 5 minus 5, 1 minus 5, 9 minus 5, and we take each of those differences, we square them, and then we divide that sum by the total number of uh, numbers in the data set. We also get 8 for that as well. All right, so the variances of the two data sets are eight in each case. Now we need to calculate the covariance. So what we do is we take the difference between each of the numbers in the first data set and the average of that data set, and we multiply that times the difference of each of the numbers in the second data set minus the average of that data set. So in this case, we take the first number, two minus six, and we multiply that times seven minus five. Notice nothing is squared here because we're already multiplying the two together. Plus the second number minus the average times the second number in the second data set, three minus five. We multiply those together. We do it for the third number, the fourth number, and the fifth number in the data set. In each case, we subtract the average from each of the five numbers in the data set. We multiply that difference of the X values times the difference in the Y values. We add them all up divided by the total number of numbers in the data set, and in this case we get 0.8. Notice we only have to do it once because the covariance of x and y is the same as the covariance of y and x. They're the same because we simply have to put this in front, put this in the back. Notice that when we multiply we get the very same result. And so that means that in this case the covariance is 0.8 and that is the number that goes in the off diagonal positions in the matrix. Now what does that represent? Well a number that's close to zero means there's not a lot of relationship between the two data sets. Notice that the x data set steadily increases from 2 all the way to 10 and by twos, but notice that the y data set goes from a high to a low to a medium to a low to a high. There doesn't seem to be that much of a system or so much of a trend in that second data set, it's kind of random, and that's why a nicely organized data set compared to a very random data set will give you a very small covariance number. And that's what we see, 0.8 is relatively small, so there doesn't seem to be much of a relationship between X and Y. And so that's what that covariance represents, and of course this is then placed into a matrix, so we can do matrix applications with it, in certain kind of like tracking algorithms and things like that. So that is how it's done. That's how we calculate the covariance matrix. And we kind of get a feel of what those off diagonal elements potentially represent. And that is how it's done.